So a lot of turbulence in retail. Some of it was caused by the pandemic, uh, supply chain problems, inflation yep. problems, things like that. Where are we today? Is it calming down any? Well, uh, I don't think things are calm at all, not even close. These are all my personal opinions. Uh, big issues are um, inconsistency. Sales are up and down, in my experience anyway. And I call a, a group of friends of mine who, uh, who are in the business. Uh, where we're today is uncertain. And uh, I don't think anyone has a crystal ball who will tell you what spring will be like, what summer will be like, or next year. There's a lot of speculators. I'm not a forecaster, and I'd like to meet someone who uh, can tell us what's going to happen. Uh, there are a lot of factors besides uncertainty. A lot of people have too much inventory, including Alex Mill, that's left over from last year, and they probably have to liquidate that now, or I assume, uh, discounting. So I'm not sure where it is. Uh, the other issue is uh, inflation. Uh, you know, the government has figures that say uh, it's down this. It's, but look at a year ago, the price of eggs, which uh, it's incredibly well known that it's uh, milk, gasoline, uh, airplane tickets, hotels, uh, food in general. And it reminds people every day that uh, their, their things are all much more expensive. At the same time, uh, people have jobs. Uh, more people have jobs than they've ever had before. And that means there is pe income being generated. Does that help retail? Particularly because a lot of those jobs are not the high paid jobs. Right. Uh, I always wonder how they know how many people every week get a job. That's just a little pet peeve of mine. Uh, they have jobs, but I think the huge amount of layoffs and the publicity and they get uh, has to have people worried about their job security. And there's so many unknowns going on in the world today, uh, you know, internationally in America. So uh, I don't know what the, un the employment means and, and I don't know what income, uh, as you mentioned, those jobs are paying. And so as a retailer, do you think about competing for essentially the wallet share of consumers? That is to say, how much money they're paying for eggs, for gas, versus what they're paying for apparel? Or are you mainly competing against other retailers? You know, uh, we're competing against ourselves. I've always done that. Uh, in the other experiences I had, uh, it was a little ha harder because we, was so, we grew so large. But right now, I really don't pay much attention. I, of course, pay attention. Uh, Alex Mill product. Uh, I look at other retailers both for ideas and getting a sense. Um, Alex Mill's pricing, which I think is very advantageous to the market. Uh, and so I, but I'm always competing with, with whoever. Um, and that's not going to stop. The other issue affecting the, uh, the, the consumer world, and I don't know about other sectors, is that so much of apparel sold today is on sale mm. uh, and uh, it's ubiquitous. And so you have companies who are dis good discount companies, TJ Maxx always comes to mind, who uh, make the, uh, you'd have to be concerned in my personal opinion, sell brands that are distributed, you know, in many, many places. Do you have any pricing power at all? That is to say, people, people are saying, I'm not just going to take the cheapest one. I want the Alex Mill one or whatever the brand is. Yeah, we, uh, my own experience, give value no matter what it is. Uh, we don't price goods to put on sale. And if you look at a lot of competitors, and a lot don't, they take very large markups. Uh, so 70, they might go 80 plus. And the designers can do that. They are very unique and special products. But uh, then the, the sale aspect, oh, I can get this for this. I can get that for that. Go online and look at the products. So I think that affects uh, a lot of people. Our pricing, we're told, is very fair. Pricing is an art. Although a lot of our business is an art, not a science. What will a customer be willing to pay for that? So... Last, uh, we put a, a hand-knit hat out, uh, hand-crafted 
the, the artist makes two a day. And we said, what's this worth? And we put a price on it that didn't meet our markup standards, but met our marketing standards. Mm -hmm. It's very special and unique. People like that. So, so here on Wall Street, we, we try to address particularly big investors, institutional investors. I know that's not your business. That's not what you used do. Used to be, but no. But investors are looking for people who can make money. Given the difficulties of the business you just described, how do you make money in this business? Well, uh, you have to be, well, product is number one. If you have good product, that's the most important thing. Good value uh, and good style. And of course, communications. You make money uh, by high sell throughs. People loving your goods, that's how you make money. You know, at Apple, they made a fortune of money because people, and they actually, in my opinion, developed kind of a monopoly with the iPhone. But um, I've never really, I've always been involved in making money and sometimes in not the companies I was with. You hit a wall, fashion is never guaranteed not to go this way. And the other factors, I like small. Uh, I think the smaller companies I know are all doing very well. Focus and a niche and a point of view. Can you get people to love your goods online? Well, that's all we do is online. I mean, we have two small stores. We're the little person out there. I always say we're the little engine that could. Uh, I kind of, I'm having fun. Of course, I worry about things because there's only 25 of us. It's a, it's a small office. And, you know, I used to have a microphone, a pager at JQ. Now the pager's me hollering <laughs> through the office. And, uh, but I like small and, and it's much easier to be small and not a big public company uh, where how we, every quarter, well, then it was monthly sales. The comps, I remember gaps went from 78 to 18 along with bad August at million, 1987, and then the stock market crash mm. long term. And, and it's, not, it's not quarterly, although I find a lot of investors uh, or people I know investors of all in our companies now we have no outside investors uh, more mercenary than this and that's okay too it's the way the world works but for you it's the product in the end it's the product it's the people and the team no one does it themselves and it's a point of view and of course you need very strong operating partners that's not what i do although i i understand it but i don't have time between all the other dudes, but you know, weekly meetings, you look at the numbers, you look at finance, you look at the debt and whatever else we have. 